Right now, many firefighter, firefighters, hundreds of them, working tirelessly in this hot, hot weather, trying to battle flames like this. We're dealing with this intense heat wave, so we want to get right to this fire at, uh, that's burning right here by the border. It's called the Border 32 Fire, and as you see, it grew pretty quickly as soon as it started yesterday afternoon. It's just northwest of Tecate in the town of Dulzura. Near that, it started in the afternoon off Barrett Lake Road near State Route 94. So there's a lot to know right now, but here are three key things. The Border 32 fire, as it's called, has burned more than 4,200 acres. It's only 5% contained. At last check, four structures have been destroyed. We begin our coverage with CBS 8's Dana Marie McNichol, who's been close to the fire all morning long. We've been here on scene since 4.30 this morning, and we quickly realized it was an all-hands-on-deck situation for firefighters, both on the ground and in the air. They just shared with us that they still don't know the cause of this fire. Now, although this is a very rural area, many people do live in the mountains here, and we met a family this morning who came back to their ranch to assess the damage. It just, it was so quick, and that he only was able just to get out, and that was it. Becky and John Gaskin returned to their ranch this morning, fearing the worst, worried about their animals they left behind. We let the horses go. The horse uh, stall is burned, and um, I'm hoping to go find him this morning. We followed behind them on their way to their ranch. Red fire retardant was sprayed all over their land. Becky realized her house was saved, but their neighbors wasn't. Heartbroken for them. Um, but we have our homes. All our barns are gone. And animals, I've lost my chicken barn and my chickens. And um, I'm hoping that we have cats still in the house. Becky and John are just one of many families affected by this fire that have animals, both livestock and pets. Some had to leave them behind. That's when the San Diego County Animal Services and the San Diego Humane Society came to rescue as many animals as possible where we evacuated anything that was definitely in danger last night, in fire danger. And then today, now we're looking at owners cannot return to their homes. They're not lifting evacuations just yet because of the behavior of the fire. So then we'll go in and we'll check all those animals that were left behind. From horses and cows to dogs and tortoises, today is about communicating with their owners. We're anxious to get out there and make sure we check them and let them know. We've given them food, we've given them water, they're safe, they're still there. As for the status of the fire, we spoke to Thomas Schutz with Cal Fire, who says he expects them to be fighting for the next week. Fire activity has slowed dramatically in, in the last 12 hours or so. Had firefighters on it all night, had a new fresh crew going out there. Uh, a, a ton of firefighters, hundreds of firefighters back out there today. And, and really just this weather is a huge challenge. The train out there is a huge challenge. And we're, we're far from out of this. Um, we, we really got to work on buttoning up this line so we can get some containment and keep the fire from spreading. If your animal was rescued late last night or early this morning and you don't know where they are, contact the Department of Animal Services. The number is there at the bottom of your screen. So many people had to leave quickly yesterday, so we have Kelly Hassadal at an evacuation center with their reactions. Yeah, and that's right. We're at Mountain Empire High School right now, where there are currently about 100 people staying at this temporary evacuation shelter. Uh, we're talking families with kids, people with pets. Uh, some of these people showed up very late last night. You know, I just talked to a woman a short time ago uh, who had her dog with her. She just found out her dog had cancer and was headed home from the vet's office yesterday uh, when she was told she couldn't go home. We had to take her to the vet, and we were stuck in alcohol. And my nephew... He lives on the property, and he told us there was a fire. So we went up eight, and then we got here in Campo, and then they clo closed it. And that was Becky Burton. Uh, she was emotional. She's had a really hard week, and now she's staying here at this evacuation shelter, wondering when she can return home and what she'll find once she gets there. Now, the Red Cross tells me about 50 people stayed inside the shelter overnight, and another 50 uh, were out here sleeping in their cars in the parking lot. You know, it was a very rough night. I spoke to a mother of an 18-month-old baby who brought him here yesterday and said he was scared. They, you know, they evacuated so quickly that she wasn't able to even grab him some shoes, so he's out here barefoot. Foot. So a lot of people on pins and needles today just hoping for the best. Uh, the Red Cross says they're doing everything they can to make sure these folks are taken care of. We have food, water, health services. If, if people evacuated and forgot medications, we can help them with that. Um, and also emotional support as well because it's a tough thing to go through. Um, so we have people on hand that are ready to help.
and the hope is that firefighters get a handle on this wildfire today. Now, the Red Cross tells me this shelter has the capacity to hold 300 people. They say they will open up a second shelter if necessary. Kelly Hassadal, CBS 8. So many people there wondering if their homes are doing okay. Uh, we do have a heads up here for those of you who need to drive into or out of Mexico. The Tecate port of entry that will remain closed today. Travelers can use the Otay Mesa port of entry. Of course, you can also use San Ysidro to cross northbound into the U.S. or southbound into Mexico. They closed that port of entry in Tecate last night early and have kept it closed since. The Border 32 fire has also prompted more road closure. Quite a few of them that involve State Route 94. So you see just west of the fire, State Route 94 at Cochera Via Road is closed. Same with 94 and Marin Valley Road, along with the 94 and Otay Lakes Road. Then east of the fire, you have the 94 and Forest Gate Road that is blocked right now. So you're being asked to just slow down in that area. Watch out for deputies, firefighters, all of that fire equipment, their engines are all on scene as they try to get containment on this. So please just keep that in mind.